Welcome back to the channel. My name's Tom, and today I'm taking a look at the mall at Whitney Field in Lemonster, Massachusetts. This mall originally opened in 1967 as the Searstown Mall, but the name was changed in 2004 to the mall at Whitney Field as part of a major renovation. The original anchor stores were Sears, R.H. White, which I've never heard of before, and Bradley's, all of which are no longer at the mall. This video was filmed on a Friday at about 11 a.m. I've never been to this mall before and I'm not sure how busy it normally is, but the mall definitely did not feel busy while I was there. I don't think I would call this a dead mall exactly, but I get the feeling that it may not be doing too well. One thing that makes me think this is these long hallways with no storefronts in them. From what I understand, these walls were put up in the last few years to cover up the vacant storefronts. And based on some old maps I found of this mall, there used to be quite a few stores where these walls are today. To the right here is the Burlington Coat Factory. From what I understand, that was originally the location of Sage Allen until it closed in 1992. Yeah. After Sage Allen closed, it was replaced by Service Merchandise and Old Navy. Service Merchandise closed in 1999, and then Circuit City moved in in 2000. Circuit City was there until 2010 when it got replaced by Ultimate Electronics. And then Ultimate Electronics closed about a year after that. And then Burlington Coat Factory moved in in 2013. And Old Navy moved out to another location in the mall in 2014. So there have been quite a few different stores in that one location over the years. And here's a picture of what this hallway looked like right around 2005 or so when Old Navy was still where uh, Burlington is today. Now from what I can tell, this hallway here to the right going all the way to the JCPenney didn't open until the 1980s. Before that there was nothing here. Uh, here's a photo I have of this area back in 1966, which is actually one year before the mall opened. And I think we are roughly where that red star is in the photo. And as you can see, it looks like this used to be an open air mall or a strip mall actually. If I'm wrong about that, please let me know in the comments, but that's what it looks like in this photo here. Now, as I said earlier, they've added a lot of these walls to the mall fairly recently, and I think it's actually a good idea because it is kind of deceptive. It makes you think that the mall is probably doing better than it actually is because you, you don't see empty stores here. You just see walls with pictures on them. But again, as far as I can tell from the old maps of the mall, pretty much everywhere you see a wall today used to be a store. So just imagine if those walls weren't there and all you saw were empty stores. I think it would give much more of an impression of this being a dead mall than it does the way it is currently. And here's the food court. I have to say it's probably one of the least impressive food courts I've seen recently. There really wasn't much of a selection of restaurants at all. But I guess it's better than nothing. And don't forget, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment, and hit that notification bell. Thanks. Not a very big food court. No. Chinese food smells good. It smells good? Yeah. Straight ahead is the JC Penny, and this is the oldest remaining anchor store in the mall. Let's take a look in JC Penny. I'd like to take a job over here first. Oh, okay. Can I do that? Yeah. yeah. Right, come on. Apparently, they have a leak in the roof because that bucket there was collecting rainwater. 
It's usually not a good sign. Yeah. Do you want to look for shoes? Coming up on the right after the shoe store, you'll see an exit to the mall. That used to be the entrance to Bradley's. Bradley's closed in 2001, and the Bradley's building was actually demolished in 2002 and was replaced with parking spots. There was a Toys R Us as well that was in a building attached oh, to the nice Bradley's, nice. but the uh, Toys R Us building itself was not demolished. That building now stands by itself in the middle of the parking lot, and we'll see that when we do the drive around. The Toys R Us closed in 2018, and Gardner Outlet Furniture moved into the old Toys R Us building in 2019. And then Gardner Outlet Furniture moved into the first floor of the old Macy's in 2022, which we'll see in a minute here. And an indoor entertainment center, Launch Entertainment, moved into the old Toys R Us building that's out in the middle of the parking lot now earlier this year. Yeah, for food. For food. Yeah. can smell the furniture. Straight ahead is the Gardner Outlet Furniture Store. From what I understand, the building that it's in today was built around 2002, and it was originally a two-story Filene's. Then the Filene's became a Macy's around 2005 or 2006, like pretty much every other Filene's. Then Macy's closed in 2020, and then the Gardner Outlet Furniture Store moved in in 2022. As far as I can tell, the old second floor of the Macy's is not occupied, except by maybe offices or storage, but I'm not sure about that. Yeah.
Here's more of those walls that they put up fairly recently. And based on a map I have of this mall from 1997, back then there were eight stores along this stretch on the right side. And you can see now it's all walls. So behind each one of those walls is a vacant store. And like I said earlier, I think it is a good idea to have these walls up because if they had vacant stores there rather than walls, this again would feel much more like a dead mall than it does currently. Straight ahead, here's where Sears used to be. This Sears closed in 2020 and it's currently the only vacant anchor store in the mall. Here's another look at that picture I have from 1966 and in that picture you can clearly see that the Sears was not attached to the rest of the mall. It looks like the mall actually ended right about where that Lens Crafters was and then this whole area here was just part of the parking lot basically. Now again, the question arises, do you think this is a dead or a dying mall? In my opinion, like I touched on earlier, I don't think it's a dead mall, but it does seem to be fighting for its life. This mall has been sold twice in the last decade, which is generally not a good sign. It was first sold by Walton Street Capital LLC to Vintage Real Estate back in 2013. It was hoped that Vintage Real Estate would revitalize the mall, but this doesn't really seem to have happened. So the mall got sold again in 2020 to Hull Property Group, who currently owns it. And Hull went ahead and started a fairly significant renovation of the mall around 2022. And they added a lot of new lighting, new carpets, and these walls that I was talking about, and the pictures on the walls. And it made everything look a lot brighter and generally cleaner and more inviting. So I guess at this point, we just have to wait and see if Hull's plans work and this mall is truly revitalized. I do hope they succeed, but I would say that I'm cautiously optimistic at best at this point. Because again, as most of us know, malls just aren't doing well in general. So it's, it's yet to be seen if this mall will really turn around or not. So if you've been to this mall before, especially, you know, back in the 70s, 80s, 90s, let me know how you think it's doing today versus how it was doing back then. And what do you think? Do you think it's a dead mall, a dying mall, or is it doing just fine? Let me know in the comments. Now don't go anywhere yet. As usual, I'm gonna do a drive around of the mall and also take a look at the old Sears Auto Center. So stay with me.
to the right of the Old Navy and to the left of the entrance there, that used to be a Chuck E. Cheese up until 2020. That old storefront there to the left used to be the Circuit City, and before that the service merchandise. And before that, again, I believe it was Sage Allen, but I'm thinking the facade changed because that doesn't look to me like the entrance to a Sage Allen. But if anybody knows for sure, let me know in the comments. I wasn't able to find any pictures of the Sage Allen online. Here's the J.C. Penny, and if I didn't know better, I would think that it was closed, but that entrance does appear to still be open. Here's where Gardner Outlet Furniture is today, but you can clearly see that's an old Macy's just by the design on the building. And before that it was Filene's, and you can also tell that it is two stories. But again, as far as I know, there's nothing on the second floor. Here's the old Sears, obviously. It still has the old sign up. I would say that logo is probably from the 80s. And while this Sears only closed in 2020, so you know, not that long ago, three years ago, the Sears looks very old. I know the Sears was here back in the 60s, but I don't think they updated the facade on this Sears in at least 40 years because this to me looks like a Sears straight out of the 70s or 80s. They might have updated it once since it was originally built, but I don't think they did it any more than that. And again, if anybody knows for sure, let me know in the comments. Now let's go take a quick drive across the street and look at the old Sears Auto Center.
So the Sears Auto Center looks pretty much exactly like the Sears building itself. You know, it looks like it's been abandoned for 20 or 30 years, even though it's only been abandoned for three. So it just doesn't look like they really kept it up that well at all. As we come around the side of the building here, look to the left and you'll see that they actually had a Jackson Hewitt tax office in here. I'm guessing within the last few years, but that's also closed. And there you have it. That's the mall at Whitney Field. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment, and hit that notification bell. I've got a lot more mall videos coming up. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.